Tell us the name of the new cigar, the future that you're giving out when they buy multiple boxes. Well, what they're getting today is uh, the Spirit de Verite, which means the Spirit of Truth. But the main label is called La Verite, which means the truth. Excellent. So the Spirit de Verite is the second bottling, like kind of like uh, Cheval Blanc and Petit Cheval Blanc. So okay. It's not that it's, it's bad, and it's not that it's a second because it's a blend mixture or anything like that. It's a second because it's, it's what didn't make the first. Explain the process of how the tobacco, the selection of the tobacco, how it's aged. Um, the tobacco is picked out of the farm, thrown into the aging process, fermentation process, put in the culones, turned a bunch of times, fermented properly, completely clean, where all the ammonias are bled out of it, all the impurities are bled out of it. And my concept is like, why bother breaking down the tobacco more? by throwing it in the bales for a few years, because now you lose aging potential. So if the process is clean, the tobacco is ready to go and ready to be smoked, why not throw it into a cigar and let it marry in a cigar as one unit instead of leaving them separate pieces and then put them into a cigar and then aging them again? It just seems like there's potential to skip the bailing process. It's a total experiment, but uh, I don't know. I think it'll work. Uh, I'm smoking one now and I actually love it. I think it's spicy. It's got a nice Nicaraguan well, yeah, earthy but flavor. Even, it, it, that the Esprit, which is the second the second bottling, I like to call it. Everything has referred to wine on this. Second bottling will be released in December. Uh, the main label, the Verite, will be actually released in uh, April next year, so one year from now. Explain to us the whole futures concept that you came up with for those two cigars in, in a nutshell. You don't I, have to get into I, I it really. I didn't cut you. I, I didn't like come up with this concept. The wine industry did it. Well, for the cigar industry, you did. I though. just stole it. <laughs> That's all right. Um, no, the futures concept. Uh, it's been in the wine industry for years. And I'm a big Bordeaux freak, as you can tell me. Because Kevin bought me a great bottle of Bordeaux. That's right. Uh, and a 2005, a great vintage. Which, <laughs> if you were a smart wine buyer, you would have. Uh, futures on the 2005. I should have, but I'm not that smart. And you would have paid a lot less for it. Because exactly. by the time I hit the shelf, the 2005 was outrageous the price. Yes, but you're worth it. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Come on, man. the futures will be offered somewhere in July, sometime in July. And they'll be about 25 to 30% lower than the retail that I'm going to set up. In the wine industry, they don't really set the prices of the retail. They kind of like hope that they'll get good ratings or it'll be a great vintage and they can raise it later on. Uh, but this is going to be a different vintage for me every year off the farm, so I'm automatically going to set one price for it. And if people buy in on futures, they can buy it for 25 to 30% less on the future pricing. And every 30 days, that future price goes up. Okay. So, if no one buys the futures, I win. <laughs> because now, I'm going to sell it for some stupid, ridiculous price. But the smart people will buy it for the futures, and then they can actually sell it back to the retailer and make money. The consumers could actually sell this product back to the retailer and make money. So talk about the packaging. I saw in Cigar Insider, you, you, you touched on it a little bit. Explain to us the whole packaging concept. By the way, that's what some wine people do. If they've sold out of futures, someone bought like a crap load of futures of wine. A lot of times, if it's a great vintage and the wine goes way up or it gets a huge rating, um, you know, like I think it was Chateau Montrose 1990. Uh, got uh, like a hundred points, right? Oh wow! And it went from a future price of like some small amount to as soon as the ninety point rating, a hundred point rating came out, it went up ridiculously in price. And there was actually retailers buying the wine back off for their customers so they could put it on their shelves. That's insane. No, that's it. But that's the wine industry. Right. The cigar industry doesn't even compare. You can't really do that. I think right. the only cigar that you could do that with at one time was Oversex. Right. You buy Oversex, you resell it <laughs> and make money off of it. But uh, back to the packaging. Let's say the packaging, all of this breed will come in boxes of 25, which I compare to 750s. So a bottle, a 750 bottle of wine would be a box of 25 in the cigar industry. Very okay. standard, standard format. 
but in the main label, the Verite, you're going to have four bottles. They're all going to be Churchill's, but they're either going to come in boxes of 10, which would be like a 375, box of 25 and 750. Okay. Boxes of 50, which would be a Magnum, you know, 1.5. Right. And then uh, boxes of uh, uh, 100, which would be like a, a 3 liter. Okay. Or a double Magnum. So it's up to the retailer to decide what he thinks his customer is going to want. They all come in master cases of 100. Okay. So if you buy a 110, you know, uh, 100 count chest, and you say, I want it in the 375, it's going to be 10 tens. If you buy it at 750, it's going to be four, uh, 425s, 250s, or 1100s. Okay. There's a possibility that maybe 10 people in the world that buy these cigars might order the, 10, uh, the, uh, the 100 count box. So now you got 10 100 count boxes made. I'm hoping I'm, I'm one of those people, actually. <laughs> well, you know, and that's, I'm, I'm trying to create one, two, well, a few things, a true vintage. Oh. Something that regulates, uh, something that might start regulation in the cigar industry, where people have to, you know, if they put vintage on a band, you know, it's actually a vintage. Bullshit. Was it 1968? Yeah, whatever. Would they have one piece of leaf in there from 1968, or any? If any, that yeah. means nothing in our industry. So I'm trying to make sure that this means something. Because every year is going to be different. It's going to be from the same vintage. And, uh, and shit, man. Every year will be unique, so people can have something that, like collector's items that they can feel like they can put aside and then collect and then enjoy them over the years because what's going to happen is they're going to age gracefully as one unit instead of aging separately in the bales and then put cigar and then you got to eat it more. Uh, I want the cigar to be uh, 15 years down the road someone pops one out of their box and it's still a phenomenal cigar. I'm making these to be aged. Right. It can be smoked right out of the box, but it's kind of like a, a young. And they are. Yeah. I'm smoking one now. Look at that. It's, it's perfect. Kinda like a, it's kind of like a young wine. That bottle of 2005 that you gave me, Kevin. Right. Uh, very good bottle of wine, but it's not ready to drink. Right. You can drink it, and it's gonna be good. Right. You know, or like you say, uh, Gouda. <laughs> it's Gouda. It's gonna be Gouda. Um, but you, you'll you'll taste it. And you go. I really like it, but I, I would prefer this in five years. Right. Just let it break down a little bit, let it kind of mellow, kind of warm the, the blend together a little bit more. That's it. So the real question is, should we pop that bottle yet? Or? Yeah, I want it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I definitely appreciate the time, Pete. No, 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 I'll no, let no, you get no, back no, to the event. No, no, no.